Okay, welcome to Oxa, everybody. My name is Tyler, I will be the guide. Okay, guys, I'm gonna break this briefing into two parts. First is the plan, and next is gear. So we're gonna be starting the hike. Uh, we'll probably start around 9.30, and slow and steady, we'll get all the way to camp around 2.30. So that's about five hours of on and off hiking. That's with about with like a half an hour, 45 minute lunch break as well. And once we are ready at the trailhead, it's time to climb the mountain. So once we've got our hiking poles, our bags packed and everything like this, the first of four climate zones is gonna be through the farmland here. So the farmland, is usually the most difficult part of the day, all the way up until camp. There's no switchbacks. It's probably gonna be exposed sunlight. Please take it easy from the start and self your, set yourself up for success later on. We're gonna be going a relatively slow pace throughout the entire day, and we're gonna be having breaks throughout the entire day. So we're gonna have through each climate zone, there'll be one catch up break and one break at the end of the climate zone. So once we have made it through the farmland, we have arrived at first pay station or entrance station, and that's at the beginning of the cloud forest. The cloud forest is usually a great break for people that are hiking. That's usually where people find their second winds. So we'll all hope for the same. Good thing about the cloud forest is there's shade and there's also switchbacks going up. So it's much um, easier, more enjoyable, enjoyable hiking. Then we have entered the Alpine zone. With the Alpine zone, from the lunch spot, we've got maybe a, another half an hour of steep switchbacks. The goal is to get to camp, which is in the Alpine zone around 2.30, so we can have an hour rest before we go to Fuego. We're always prepared for the worst and we hope for the best. I've had it read clear, 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 good weather all the way through the forecast. And then a flash storm, it hails on me four inches in two hours. We are prepared for the worst and we hope for the best up on the volcano here. So guys, um, from the very start, communication is very, very important. So when we're coming, starting point in the farmland is about 7,800 feet about 2,500 meters, and that's when altitude sickness can start. If you're feeling a headache, if you're feeling nausea, if you're feeling extremely out of breath, please, please let me know, and I'm gonna do what I can to help you. I have ibuprofen, and all the guides carry ibuprofen. Um, that helps thin out your blood and enhances circulation through your body and brain, so it'll make you much more comfortable. Most important is communicate with me, guys. If you're feeling sick, let's take care of that early before it snowballs and becomes a bigger problem. And also, if you have any pain with blisters and anything like that, please let me know because I'll be carrying band-aids and uh, all sorts of equipment to help repair the blisters. Earlier, the better. Fuego is a additional option that I would recommend to anybody who is feeling up for it. So if you do want to go to Fuego, first of all, we'll be carrying light bags. We're gonna be carrying our bags with just all of our layers, our headlamp, our water, and some snacks. So you're gonna have a much lighter bag going to Fuego. Um, but the trail is much more difficult than anything we'll have seen in the day previously. So if you feel any headaches, if you feel any cramps, nausea, anything like this, it's a great idea to sit Fuego out because the trail is much more technical. The coldest parts of this trip and really the reason that we're gonna bring a lot of clothes is for the times we're in the volcanic zone. So when we are up here at Fuego, and we are up here at the peak of a Cotonango, it's gonna be cold, okay? Even if the weather says it looks like it's gonna be good in the forecast, we're always prepared for the worst. Prepared for the worst, hope for the best. If you do not go to Fuego, you're gonna be staying with an assistant guide back at camp. He's gonna be making sure you get dinner, some hot drinks. You can watch the volcano go off. It's an amazing view, so nice place to chill. We've got from camp, I usually say about 300 meters down and 300 meters up Fuego. 
and then back 300 meters down 300 meters up that's a lot of extra elevation especially if we're thinking about waking up at four in the morning and summiting the next morning which is about an hour and a half difficult hike we'll leave camp around 3 30 and it's going to be about hour 45 minutes two hours to get to the knife's edge of fuego this is where we just need to make sure we listen to the guide's judgment as far as fuego goes because the eruptions can be very unpredictable it'll be better safe than sorry as far as that goes it's the night before a big trip so we want to take care of ourselves all the way through from now up until tomorrow i say everything in the outdoors is a snowball effect so if you don't hydrate right now you might pay for it up there on the volcano when we go up in high altitude so take care of yourselves from here um, tomorrow we're gonna meet here at seven o'clock and we're gonna get geared up with all our clothes and everything like that so we each need to carry four and a half liters of water i usually say two of these two liter bottles and then a couple gatorades or pedialytes for your electrolytes i also recommend everybody show up with eh, about five to seven snacks uh, i recommend a mixture of salty and sweet you can go to any tiendas and get say like nuts and some gummies we need to make sure we have a good charge or new batteries in our headlamps it's very important to us and the whole group to avoid any accidents for our clothing i'm going to start from the top down sun protection if you would like if you don't wear a sun hat please bring sunscreen I recommend we definitely, all of us need to have beanies, something warm to cover our ears. For your mouth, I recommend a mask for all the dust. It will help you stay a lot more comfortable throughout the journey. Moving on to the top layers, feel free to bring an extra t-shirt. If you sweat a lot, you probably wanna change in to an extra t-shirt. Above the t-shirt, I recommend a four layer system. I'm looking for a thermal. I'm looking for a fleece. I'm looking for a puffy jacket. And then your shell, your rain shell, right over that. If you don't have a rain shell, please make sure you borrow an extra like thin layer because that's not gonna keep in the heat the way that uh, we would want. So we rent out ponchos. If you don't have a rain jacket, take a poncho, but just make sure you're taking care of yourself as far as staying warm up there. Gloves, definitely need gloves. Everybody needs gloves. And then the bottom layers. I recommend that we have a good pair of pants to be at the summit. And for the feet, everybody in closed toed shoes, that's non-negotiable. So make sure you bring closed toed shoes for the hike. Um, of course, ankle sport will be better. As well, I always like to bring a change of socks. I call them my magic socks. So before I go to bed, I put on my nice warmest pair of socks. So that'll be my sleeping socks and my socks for the summit the next morning, which is gonna be the coldest part for your feet and toes. We will go to Rainbow Cafe. It's a delicious typical breakfast with eggs, beans, tortillas, and coffee and tea. Can't forget that. From the breakfast spot, it will be an hour drive to the trailhead. And at the trailhead, that is where we will meet our porters. If you would like to take a porter, I encourage it. If you're questioning it, I encourage it. It's a very good idea, so don't feel embarrassed by taking a porter, it is all good. And they will carry your bag from La Soledad at the start all the way up to camp. So if you do want to bring a porter, please make sure you bring a small day bag with you that way you can give the porter your big bag packed with our gear all our overnight gear and then you can carry a small bag with a liter of water and maybe a light layer that's all you really need in that day bag for lunch we're going to be providing a big old sandwich from a local bakery all very delicious anybody that has dietary needs it's all going to be taken care of don't worry about that and if you need to communicate with me please do for dinner pasta and vegetarian sauce 
homemade by Mary Bell back there in the kitchen. And then breakfast the next morning is also included. Again, from a delicious local bakery, we've got a mixture of different flavored breads, banana breads, and chocolate bread, carrot cake, English muffin, or bagels. With all the fixings, so we got peanut butter, we got chocolate, we got marmalade, and coffee and tea. This is Tyler again, guys. Thank you very much for coming to the briefing. Here's to a great trip tomorrow.